Good evening, everyone. Time for another member update. This is the eight hour chart of the SSE composite, the Chinese stock market index. We're going to talk a little bit about China, some cryptocurrencies and the Chinese stocks as well. But before we get into that, I wanted to do something here for you flat earth fruitcakes. And uh, for those of you who, who aren't in entertaining the flat earth notions, uh, just bear with us crazy ones here. Uh, happened to be coming home in the car today, believe it or not, and heard a song from a band that uh, I actually listened to a lot when I was young and went to a con saw them in concert and uh, didn't even know what this song was about. But uh, listen to this song. I think you're going to know what this is about. I'll jump over and I will play the lyrics for you when uh, the parts are playing here. So let's start with this first one here. They say the sea turns so dark that you know it's time you see the sign. They say the point demon's guard is an ocean grave for all the brave. Was it you that said, Hello? 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 To the point of no return. So that's an interesting cover. Let's listen to the other one here. Today I found a message floating in the sea from you to me. Lord, that when you could see it, you cried with fear. The point was near. Was it you that said, Hello? 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 To the point of no return. So that's Kansas, the point of K-N-O-W, return. You tell me what that means. So let's get back to the Chinese stock market here. Um, I think myself and Peter Schiff, we're really the only two that are still kind of bullish on China. As Peter pointed out the other day, it's they just opened it up for people to be able to buy these shares. And uh, the... Chinese people piled in. We know they have tremendous savings. I've talked about their real estate before. I think you need to put 30 or 40 percent down. Um, you know, they have trillions of dollars in foreign exchange reserves. The Chinese, I think they save 30 or 40 percent of their income. It's something that's totally ridiculous. So I, I, I've said for a long time, I don't think this bull market's over. I think it's going to go to 40 or 50,000. I may be totally wrong. And uh, this thing could completely collapse. And it just that's the depression, but I don't think so. So I wanted to show you some interesting stuff that's happened with the cryptocurrencies. Now, I've had some people that do trade crypto and, uh, you know, have asked me for advice. Now, I can't give trading advice because it, it's just uh, you can't. It, it, things happen too fast. Now, I was actually in this market. This was uh, a very interesting thing because... Uh, I was trading Namecoin and Litecoin and uh, uh, some other ones, but the one, the primary ones that were making a move on BTC-E were, were uh, Namecoin and Litecoin. And I actually uh, was trading at night and I had to go to bed. And so I was long Litecoin. I was long uh, a lot of Litecoin and I, I wasn't willing to sleep on it overnight. And so I had to make the decision, all right, what do I want to sleep on? Do I want to sleep on Bitcoin or do I want to sleep on dollars? Because on the BTCE exchange, you can sell for either one. And I didn't, I, I've never really traded in dollars and I don't like to trade in dollars. One of the reasons is because then you know your customer rules start to apply and I, I'm not, I don't want, want to be involved with the regulations. So I try to stick to crypto and crypto for crypto sort of thing. So that was why I decided to go ahead and cash out all of my Litecoins and go into Bitcoins. And so I got into Bitcoins about 285. I wake up the next morning and Bitcoin's at like 292 and Litecoin has been cut in half even more. So I actually went long, 100% long down around in here and doubled the number of Litecoins that I have. So now I'm 100% long in Litecoin. So that's very interesting, but I wanted to show you on the cryptocurrency uh, charts here, the volume charts. Now, I just opened a Bitfinex account. And for those 
of you who don't have Bitfinex, uh, I did not know this. I just found this out when I opened the account that you can short uh, and trade on margin. I'm not sure how they do it. I'm not sure how the mechanism works. I actually traded, I actually sent a half a Bitcoin over to Bitfinex to open my account. And again, the same rules apply there. Know your customer limitations. They want to know who you are. They didn't care who I was if I was sending Bitcoin. But if I want to get involved in dollars, then they want to know who I am. So I'm not going to get involved in dollars. Uh, but I did open a margin account there, and I did do some test trades. I went ahead and tried to buy Litecoins on margin low. I bought 100 Litecoins with a half a Bitcoin. So that was like five times margin. Uh, just watched it trade a little bit, turned around and liquidated it, but... Uh, that does give you the ability to go short. So I'm not really sure if uh, how much of the sell-off could have been kind of a derivatives-based thing. I don't know. Now, the other thing is the volume of the exchanges that are coming out of China. Uh, you can't see it here, but I know that uh, the BTC38, OKCoin, OK BTC China, uh, and this uh, Huobi, uh, th these are all Chinese exchanges. I, I think that the Chinese make up about 90% of the volume in the, the cryptocurrencies now, which is absolutely amazing. This, this is a graphical uh, image of what the trading volumes are like. Um, I think that I'm not sure which exchange this is. I think this is probably, um, well, I don't know. But anyway, a couple that stand out here, you can see Litecoin China. See that? Litecoin uh, the the Chinese yuan is actually twice the trading size of Bitcoin. Uh, Litecoin Chinese yuan, as big as Bitcoin US dollar on this exchange. Big stuff happening in China. So I'm very bullish on Litecoin from here. Yes, it's had a tremendous move up, but you have to remember where it came from. Looking out on the long, long term, uh, Litecoin was all the way up at 50 bucks. So... Uh, I feel very comfortable piling in at around four bucks, and uh, I, I probably could get an easy double from here. So that's what's going on with the cryptos. Now, I wanted to connect this to the China story because I found this story uh, on one of the message boards, and I haven't seen anybody else cover this, and this is really, really interesting take on that shutdown that they had. And uh, this connects what happened in China to what happened in the U.S. So I'm going to go ahead and read this. China stocks and the New York Stock Exchange shut down the untold story. Yesterday, beginning at 11.32 a.m., and for the next three hours and 40 minutes, the iconic New York Stock Exchange shuttered trading in all of its listed securities. The exchange said it had experienced an internal glitch. Unknown to most Americans, some of those shuttered stocks on the New York Stock Exchange were Chinese stocks and among the largest capitalized companies in the world. More than 100 Chinese companies trade on U.S. stock exchanges as, an Amer as American depository receipts, ADRs. And almost 200 Chinese company ADRs trade over the counter in the U.S. Individual shares are referred to as ADS, American Depository Shares. Last year, Thomson Reuters estimated the market value of Chinese companies listed on the just the New York Stock Exchange and NASDAQ stock market at more than $1.4 trillion. With the Chinese stock market rupturing over the past week and trading in more than 1,000 stocks suspended in China, the spillover has hit the U.S. market hard. According to Price Waterhouse Coopers, March 31, 2015 list of the largest 100 global companies by market cap, there are 11 Chinese companies in that group. And actually, I've done coverage in the past of the Chinese banks. And uh, if you look at the banks uh, and the capitalization in the banks, they dwarf the West. We took a look at trading in just two of those names yesterday, China Mobile and China Life Insurance, both of which trade as ADRs in the New York Stock Exchange. We looked at how China Mobile and China Life Insurance traded before, during, and after the New York Stock Exchange halted trading on all its securities. An interesting pattern emerged. See the charts below. After volume spikes in the morning prior to the trading halt by the exchanges, volume was subdued during the hours the exchange remained closed. Other trading venues are supposed to pick up the slack when an exchange goes dark. 
Then volume picked up again when the exchange reopened. China Mobile, symbol CHL, closed down 5.38% yesterday, while China Life Insurance, symbol LTR, dropped 6.65% in New York trading. If Wall Street firms are, were afraid of roiling Chinese stocks further with huge volume and panic selling in the U.S., a subdued volume during the three-hour and 40-minute halt at the New York Stock Exchange came in handy. Americans are also largely in the dark about the fact that since 2010, the Securities Exchange Commission has brought dozens of fraud cases against China-based firms, and more than four dozen of those firms have been deregistered from the U.S. exchanges, unfortunately not before U.S. investors have been fleeced. Dozens of Chinese frauds resulted from reverse mergers. That process permits private companies, including those located outside the U.S., to access U.S. stock markets by merging with an existing publicly traded shell company. Some of the frauds, however, involved Chinese companies that went through a regular initial public offering IPO process and used large Wall Street firms as underwriters. Even worse, the potential for continued accounting fraud on the part of the Chinese listed companies still exists as a result of a sellout settlement by the SEC in February of this year. In January of last year, the SEC had won a ruling from the administrative law judge Cameron Elliott barring the Chinese affiliates of the big four accounting firms from leading audits for companies listed on U.S. exchanges for six months as a result of their refusal to turn over their audit work papers on companies under investigation by the SEC. The accounting firms had argued that they had to refuse turning over the documents in order to avoid violating state secrecy laws in China. The accounting firms involved were, and here you've got the regular ones, uh, Deloitte and Touche Home Toilet, Toilet and Douche, uh, one leading one accounting firm, BDO China Doha uh, Company Limited, received only a censure since it had already withdrawn as registrant in the U.S. market. With the scathing court decision against the auditors in hand, the SEC had the power to ensure it got the audit papers it needed in the future to safeguard U.S. markets. Instead, on February 6th of this year, the SEC folded like a cheap suit. It fined each of the accounting firms $500,000 and got an admission that the auditors did not produce the documents before the proceedings were instituted against them. The SEC was still going to allow them to route its request for audit papers through Chinese regulator, who remained free to refuse the request. The Wall Street Journal's editorial page, typically a Wall Street sycophant, headlined with the SEC caves on China. The editors wrote, the SEC commissioners decided this month not to suspend the Chinese audit firms or penalize them beyond the token fines of $500,000, less than an average partner's salary. In return, the firms agreed to follow certain procedures for conveying audit information to the SEC through Chinese state regulators. Yet Chinese authorities aren't even a party to the settlement, so they remain as free as ever to stymie future investigations. The editors added, the upshot is that investors in U.S. capital markets still lack basic protections against Chinese fraudsters. For once, we completely agree with the editorial page of the Wall Street Journal. And here's the charts. So that's a very, very interesting take. Uh, do we, are we now seeing the Chinese tail wagging the U.S. dog? Is, is that what's going on? Do we have a reverse China syndrome? You remember the movie China Syndrome? where uh, the nuclear reactor is going to melt down and go through, oh, that's right, the spinning ball earth to the other side um, and uh, go all the way through to China? Or is it China going all the way through and controlling the U.S.? So very interesting stuff going on. It very well could be that China is calling the shots. If, if you remember on... The web page, actually, if you've gone to my blog recently, let's jump over there real quick, Silver for the People. Uh, there's a quote here from Bill Holter, and uh, he pretty much hints at the fact that he thinks it's probably China that's behind this. And this is the quote of the day that's up there. Quote, there is no market anywhere on the planet where the amounts of futures dwarf the physical product so overwhelmingly than in silver. Why is silver so important? Why has it been bludgeoned so badly and even priced below the cost of production? You must understand how small the silver market is. Total global production is less than $15 billion per year, but silver cannot be left alone because high silver prices do not jibe with low gold prices and gold must be kept down 
and out of the limelight because high gold prices do not fit with low interest rates, which are an absolute must in an effort of reflation. You see, in no way can interest rates be allowed to rise with the amount of global debt outstanding. Higher interest rates will crush the debt outstanding, but the silver market is at the very beginning of the food chain. That keeps the lid on interest rates. I believe the Chinese hold this market in their back pocket, paid for with pocket change. They will use it at their own discretion. That's Bill Holter. So it looks like there's some evidence, more evidence now, that it might be the Chinese calling the shots, even to the extent of the Chinese requesting that the New York Stock Exchange put a halt to stop the slide in the Chinese ADRs. So that's very interesting, some kind of China syndrome. And we'll talk to you next time.